This time around, we're ready to tell you about one extremely simple but easily overlooked aspect of effective teaching. If you can master this simple principle, then you will boost the quality of your students' thinking and your class discussions. That simple concept is called wait time, and it refers to the amount of time you wait for students to respond after you ask a question. We all know that it takes time for anyone to process what a question is asking and then to think of an answer. Unfortunately, many teachers do not allow an appropriate amount of time for student thinking and response, resulting in lower student engagement. It can feel really awkward for teachers when they ask a question and hear crickets. But the effective teacher must learn to embrace this silence as the sound of students thinking. The natural tendency is to ask a question and then wait for just one second before expecting a response. If no student response is given, teachers often rephrase their question or answer it themselves. Obviously, we cannot expect one second to be a sufficient period of time for students to think and respond. Dr. Mary Bud Rowe, who originated the idea of wait time in the 1970s, suggests that teachers intentionally increase their wait time to a minimum of three seconds. That doesn't seem like much, but the modest increase in the time between when a teacher asks a question and expects a response has a number of positive outcomes. For example, Rowe observed that student answers improved in quality, more students were likely to respond, and teachers were more likely to ask complex, meaningful questions. But most teachers don't do this naturally. If you'd like to expand your own wait time, I recommend counting in your head after you ask a question. Embrace the silence it takes to let your students think. Try to count up to 3, 5, or even 7 seconds before breaking the silence, and you'll see that students are much more likely to respond once you give them an adequate chance. Another tendency of teachers is to call on the first hand that's raised. While we might feel excited that a student will break the silence with a response, we shouldn't jump at the first hand we see. Commit to waiting a certain period of time between asking your question and allowing any response. That way, not only will the first student have an answer, but many more students will likely formulate a thought during the wait time you provide. Wait time is even important to consider after a student responds to your question. You don't have to carry on a discussion at breakneck speed. Instead, let others hear and fully process a student's response before moving on to your next statement. This will enhance your class discussions by allowing sufficient time for the thinking and processing that must necessarily accompany the questions and answers in a conversation. It also helps your students recognize the value of their peers' responses. Finally, remember that you don't have to be the only one in the classroom who uses wait time. You should transparently tell students about this important listening technique. Let them know that you are going to use this in your class discussions and wait patiently for them to think. Then encourage them to do the same thing with one another. Not only will the quality of your discussions improve, but so too will the quality of your students' interactive and listening skills. So what are you going to do next time after you ask a question? That's right. You're going to count in your head to at least three before calling on a student or making your next statement. Now you've mastered this simple but essential classroom discussion technique.